Tell me why. I mean, I was born in Iowa and raised in New York by two parents that went to a PWI. But when I saw on TV that there were schools in the South where I could come and there were people that looked like me and I could get a cultural education in addition to my, my academic education, I only applied to HBCUs. So when I talk to students, I'm always gonna say, are the HBCUs at the top of your list? Because I tell our coaches, I expect you to recruit the top 10 in the country. Because I absolutely believe that HBCU education is the best education you can get. I went to North Carolina Central University and have had the pleasure to serve at many. And I think students are starting to see what I know I saw back in the 90s, which was this is a place to call home. I took a class across town at a PWI while I was at my HBCU. But at my HBCU, my teacher knew who my name, what my name was. When I didn't come to class with my homework, they asked me where it was. When I looked a little down, they cared. When I went across town, I was one of 400 but I was one of only two students of color in the whole class. And every time I told the professor my name and who I was, he forgot. And I talked to him after every class and he couldn't remember. It was just a different dynamic. If I had to do it again, I would do it the same way. We give you a different enrichment. It's about the whole student. And that's not to say that the PWIs don't. But when I came to the South, you know, I didn't have grandparents that lived in the South. So I didn't come down South you know, during the summers or during the winters. You know, this was my first time coming down south. You know, I picked up my freshman 15, which I think everybody has to do that when you come. Yeah, to yeah. You know, but I also came down and helped go protest and, and try and keep Barbara Scotia open when during my freshman year. I had a chance to sit in the hallway at financial aid and 25 years later, I could still tell the stories about the financial aid lady that went to lunch while we were trying to sit there in the hallway and get our FAFSA process. But I also figured out how to be an athletic trainer and start on a path to a career that gives me a great opportunity while being in school with a Lavelle Moten, who's now the head coach at North Carolina Central and having Larry Lill as the head football coach while I was there and being the athletic trainer that worked with them. Then having a chance to meet my husband who was playing at ACC school across town. And he was always over on my campus. So I know that HBCU is a great place to come and not only get an education, but to grow and nurture and care. You know, it is a place where we wrap our arms around our students and we see you. We see you and we care. And when you need to have a conversation, we can set aside what you didn't do in the classroom. When your parents call to say, the police came and picked up my child, what can we do? We don't just cast you away and say, oh, well, we're cutting our ties. We're behind the scenes trying to figure out how can we legally within NCA rules help this student, what attorney can get to that student and how within the rules we can nurture that student and still provide you an opportunity, hold you accountable, not just give you a, a, a clean slate, but hold you accountable, but still give you that opportunity to get to that degree. I mean, I have a head basketball coach that won a championship this year, and we had to have some accountability with some of our student athletes during the year. And he said to me, he said, this is what I need to do. I said, I support you. Do what you need to do. And look at that, a CIAA championship, and he did it the right way. 